But now my hardy crew rebel. My daughter to a tar is partial. Such shows if storms and sad to tell, it threatens a good cheerfulness returns, for misfortunes crowd upon me, and all my old friends seem to have turned against me. Oh, no, dear Captain, do not say all. Oh, twere unjust to one, at least. True, for you are staunch to me. If ever I gave my heart again, me thinks to such an one as this. I, I am touched to the heart by your sincere regard for me, and were things otherwise, I think I could have returned it, but as it is, I fear I can be no more to you than a friend. Oh, I understand, for you hold aloof from me, because you are high and high-born and I poor and lowly, but take care, this poor bumble woman has gypsy blood in her veins, and she can read destinies. Destinies? I be prepared. Things are seldom what they seem. Skim milk masquerades as cream. Hylos pass as painted leathers. Jackdaws strap in peacock's feathers. Very true, so they do. Black sheep dwell in every fold. All that glitters is not gold. Stocks turn out to be but locks. Bones are but inflated frogs. So they be frequently. Drops the wind and stops the mill. Turbid is ambitious brill. Gill the fallen if you will. Yet it is a foreign state. Yes, I know it is so. Though to catch a drift, I'm striving. It is shame, it is shame. I can't see on what you're driving, Mystic Lady, Mystic Lady. Still in conviction that I'm feeling that the Mystic Lady is deep in oracular Yes, I know that is so. Though I'm anything but clever, I could talk like that forever. Once a cat was killed by care, only pray deserve a fair. Very true, so they do. Care is often 
spoke the trout, spoke spoke the trout who spares the rod. Thirsty lambs run foxy dangers, dogs are found in many mangers. Frequently, I agree. Poor a cat, the chestnut snatches, birds of fun of charming snatches, only count the chick that hatches, men are grown up cats she catches. Yes, I know, that is so, though to catch my drift is striving, I dissemble, I dissemble, when he sees at what I'm driving, let him tremble, let him tremble, Yes, I know. That is so. No, the minister is too far. I will learn the truth with sorrow to kill it today and gone tomorrow. Yes, I know. That is so. Impenetrable as her utterances are, I nevertheless feel they are dictated by a sincere regard for me. But to what new mysteries is she referring? Time alone can tell. Captain Corcoran, I am much disappointed with your daughter. In fact, I don't think she will do. She won't do, Sir Joseph. I'm afraid not. Although I've urged my suit with as much eloquence as is consistent with an official utterance, is that I have done so hitherto without success. How do you account for this? Oh, really, Sir Joseph, I hardly know. Josephine is, of course, sensible of your condescension. She would be, naturally. But perhaps your exalted rank dazzles her. You think it does? I can hardly say. But she's a simple girl, and her social position is far below your own. Uh, maybe she thinks she's not worthy of you. That is really a very sensible suggestion and shows more knowledge of human nature than I have given you credit for. But see, she can't. Uh, if, your, if your lordship would kindly reason with her and assure her officially that it is, a, it is a standing rule at the Admiralty that love levels all ranks, her, her respect for an official utterance might cause her to Look upon your offer in its proper light. It is not unlikely. I will follow your suggestion. But soft, she is here. Let us go and wait our opportunity.
Exalted rank. I desire to convey to you officially my assurance that if your hesitation is attributable to that circumstance, it is uncalled for. Ah, then your lordship is of opinion that married happiness is not inconsistent with discrepancy in rank. That is my opinion officially. That the high and the lowly may be truly happy together, provided that they truly love one another. Madam, I desire to convey to you, officially, my opinion that love is a platform upon which all ranks meet. Oh, I thank you, Sir Joseph. I did hesitate, but I will hesitate no longer. He little thinks how eloquently he has pleaded his rival's cause. <laughs> Wherefore love can lend all ranks, and therefore, though his lordship's nation's might, the stupendous be his brain, though her tastes are mean and faulty, and her fortune poor and plain. Ring the merry bells as broad ship, then the air in warbling bow, for the union of his lordship with a humble captain's child, for a humble captain's daughter, for a gallant captain's daughter, and the lord who rules the water, and the tall flowers the water. <laughs> Let the air with joy be laden, ring with songs the air above, for the union of this lordship with the man who wants to go. Never mind the why and wherefore love can level like can therefore, though your nautical relations never in my set can pass, though you occupy a station in the lower middle class. Ring the very bells and watches, then the air with warbling wild, for the union of the torture with a humble captain's child, for the humble captain's daughter, for a gallant captain's daughter, and a lord who rules the water, and a tower of the water. Rent the air with joy be laden, and we saw the air above, for the union of the maiden with the man who rules the water.
my delight at the result, the happy result of your eloquence. Your argument was unanswerable. Captain Corcoran, it is one of the happiest characteristics of this glorious country of ours that official utterances are invariably regarded as unanswerable. <laughs> uh, my fondest hopes are to be crowned. My only daughter is to be the bride of a cabinet minister. The prospect is Elysian. Captain, oh, did I? You here, don't! Don't shrink from me, Captain. I'm on personal good, I know, and my name's again me, but I ain't as bad as I seem. What would you with me? I've come to give you warning. Indeed. Do you propose to leave the Navy then? Now you misunderstand me. Listen. <laughs> kind Captain, I've important information. Sing out here the kind commander that you are. About a certain intimate relation, sing hey the merry maiden and the tar. The merry merry maiden, the gay merry 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 maiden, the maiden and the tar. Good fellows in conundrums you are speaking, sing hey the mystic sailor that you Answer to the name I am seeking. Sing hey the merry maiden and the tar. The merry 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 and the Kind captain, your young lady is a sigh. Sing hey the simple captain that you are. This very night with Rex Rock we fly. Sing hey the merry maiden and the tar. The merry, merry maiden, the merry, merry maiden, the much too merry maiden and the tar. Good fellow, you have given timely warning. Sing hey the thoughtful sailor that you I'll talk to Master Rackstra in the morning. Sing hey the cat and nine tails and the tar. The merry cat and merry cat and the merry cat and merry cat the merry cat and nine tails and the timely warning. Go and fetch my boat cloak. I shall at once take means to arrest their flight. This boat cloak will afford me ample disguise. So. Aha! They're foiled! Foiled! Oh, 
heart of mine, I insist upon knowing where you may be going with these sons of the bride. For my excellent crew, the foes they can thump when he is scarcely fit company, my lady for you. Now hark at the doom, the foes he can thump when he has scarcely fit company for a lady like you. Discover from the expression of my eyes. My rules, one word, the facts are not before you. The word was injudicious, I allow. But hear my explanation, I implore you, and you will be indignant too, I vow. I will hear of no defense, attempt none if you're sensible. That word of evil sense is wholly indefensible. Go, I will get you hands to your cabin with celerity. This is the consequence of ill-advised asperity. This is the consequence of ill-advised asperity. For I'll teach you all along to be thankful of language strong. For I haven't any sympathy for ill good at all. No more have his sisters, nor his cousins, nor his aunts. Thank you. 
fine fellow for you are a fine fellow. Yes, Your Honour. How came your captain so surely to forget himself? Surely you have not given him any cause for a disagreement? Please, Your Honour, it was thus wise. You see, I'm only a topman, a mere former's hand. Don't be ashamed of that. Your position as a top man is a, a very exalted one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Your Honour, love burns as brightly in the forecastle as it does on the quarterdeck. And Josephine is the fairest bud that's ever blossomed upon the tree of a poor fellow's wildest hopes. Oh, darling! She is the figurehead of my ship of life, the bright beacon that guides me into my port of happiness. That, the rarest, the purest gem that ever sparkled upon a poor but worthy fellow's trusting brow. Very pretty, very pretty. Insolent sailor, you shall repent this outrage. Seize him! Sir Joseph, please spare him my love indeed. Pray don't. I shall, this insolent mariner, I shall clap him in irons at once. Take him in irons and take him to the dungeon. Have you a dungeon on board? We have. Then lose him in irons and take him there at once. Again, it is not easy to express my amazement, my surprise. Again, you may discover from my eyes.
Oh, bitter is thy cup. However could I do it, I mixed those children up, and not a creature knew it. However could you do it, someday no doubt you'll bring it. Although no creature knew it, so many years ago. In time each little waif forsook his foster mother. The well-born babe was wrong. You're at it all, oh, the other. They left their foster mother. The one was ready for brother, our captain was the other. How many years ago? Then I am to understand that Captain Corcoran and Rafe were exchanged in childhood's happy hours, that Rafe is really the captain and the captain is Rafe. That is the idea I intended to convey officially. And very well you have conveyed it, Miss Buttercup. Uh, dear me. <laughs> Let them appear before me at once. Oh. Oh. <laughs> My father, a common sailor. It is hard, is it not, me duck? <laughs> This is a most singular occurrence. I congratulate you both. Captain Maxtor, desire that remarkably fine seaman to step forward. Corcoran, three paces to the front, march! Is what? Is what? I don't quite understand you. If you please. What? The gentleman is quite right. If you please. Oh. If. You please. You're an extremely fine sailor. Yes, Your Honour. So it seems that you were Rafe, and Rafe was you. So it seems, Your Honour. Well, I need not tell you that after this change in your condition, a marriage with your daughter will be out of the question. Don't say that, Your Honour. Love levels all right. It does to a considerable extent, but it does not level them as much as that. Here, sir. Take her, and mind you treat her kindly. Oh, bliss! Oh, rapture! Oh, oh rapture. rapture! Oh, bliss! <laughs> Sad, my lot, and sorry. What shall I do? I cannot live alone. Fear nothing. While I live, I'll not desert you. I'll soothe and comfort your declining days. Don't do that. Oh, indeed, I'd rather. Oh, very well, then. Tomorrow morn our vows will all be plighted. Three loving pairs on the same day. You're Yeah. 
across the sea. And when I marry thee, I'll be true to the devotion that my love implies. Say goodbye to your sisters and your cousins and your aunts, especially your cousins whom you reckon up by dozens. Say goodbye to your sisters and your cousins and your aunts, especially your cousins whom you reckon up by dozens. Especially your cousins whom you reckon up by dozens. Especially your cousins whom you reckon up by dozens. This is Chris Flint playing this mini grand, uh, and it's a Yamaha, I understand. It is, yeah. And it's been loaned uh, for the concert by a by member the of the, the treasurer. Said group. Yeah. By the treasurer. The treasurer. You've got a good treasurer. <laughs> that is fantastic. Thank you, Chris. <laughs>